I've got boxes and a knife could only mean one thing maybe two things let's open them hey guys this is Gus G and you're watching Guitar Gear Guy thank you for tuning in You know, every year I do New Year's resolution and I go, you know, I'm going to buy less and really spend more time improving upon my craft as a guitar player. Every year I say this. So obviously the year 2019 did not go exactly as I had hoped or planned. Hello everyone, how are you? This is yours truly, Triple G, coming at you once again. Today is December 24th, 2019, and that means it's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow is Christmas Day. All right, so um, as uh, we saw earlier in the, this video, I've got a couple of new things, and um, as Rob Chapman once famously said in one of his videos I watched, he said he who dies with the most number of guitars wins. So by that mantra, I may throw my hat in to contend. Because apparently there is no shortage around here in terms of number of guitars that's coming in. All right, so uh, one of the two guitars that I'm gonna just briefly show you today, just unboxing real quick with my usual banter type of episode today. I'm not going into an actual gear chat. So guitar number one that I am going to show you today is this American Professional Series the Telecaster. It's a limited edition that's got ebony fretboard. And ebony fretboard here has a, a streaky type of a pattern, which I like. Uh, oftentimes you're going to see ebony board that is just dyed black. And it's just solid black where uh, this has a really nice uh, streaky thing going on, which I like. And this thing has a uh, painted black, black uh, painted headstock, which I think uh, looks really nice. And um, this is oddly actually is not the only American Fender product that I've bought recently. Um, probably show you the b-roll as I'm saying this but I also got the new American Ultra Telecaster in Texas T again uh, not gonna show that to you today I'll do a proper gear chat for that later on hopefully sometime very soon but I wanted to show you this um, you know the Lake Placid blue really caught my eye so I Oh, along with the uh, streaky ebony board and I wanted to have a proper Telecaster um, uh, that is uh, an American made and what have you so uh, that's guitar number one and then guitar number two I want to show you today which came out of the bigger box earlier is this guy right here oh yeah okay so you probably figured out what it is but it's not what you think it is all right, so um, this obviously is the uh, Michael Shanker signature guitar by Dean. If you see that headstock, it's obvious that it's a Dean. Why is my camera not focusing? Oh well, whatever. Uh, so even the back, like that. So uh, somebody actually, uh, I saw somebody saying this is the signature guitar of, um, there is this character that's in 101 Dalmatians. The, in the original movie, the character was played by Glenn Close. I think the new adaptation that they're making has Emma Stone, who I love a lot. Um, she is a half white, half black, kind of like the uh, this finish here. So this right here is not the Dean Michael Shanker that you could go out and buy in the store today. This is for actually from year 2004. So 2004 is when Dean first put out Michael Shanker's signature guitar, signature V, he is famously known for. 
Although the Gibson version that he played is Rudolph Shanker's signature, uh, Michael, I don't believe, never had an actual Gibson signature. So this is his official signature guitar. This is brand new, even though it's a 2004. Uh, I flew this in from Korea and uh, you know, came yesterday, but I wanted it to uh, kind of acclimate to the weather here. So I kept it in my office for a day before I opened it and shooting this video. Uh, so this is Korean made. It's not China made. Um, the US made ones are stupid expensive. Um, no, no chance I can get one of those. But um, this is Korean made. It's a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be. But I mean, just look at that. Michael Schenker being one of my top five favorite ever guitar player, maybe. Definitely within top 10, contending for top five. So um, really super pumped out. Uh, you know, when I started to collect guitars, one of the things that I, I said, you know, was that I would get a Michael Shanker signature. I just love the V with the black and white half and half. I just really love it. And it had to have the block inlay. And uh, this has the Dean DMT pickups, which I had a pretty decent experience with. And, the Michael Amat guitar that I have. So anyhow, these two are uh, what I've just recently acquired, which I will come back to you with proper gear chat video with. Now, on to the rest of this episode. Let's uh, talk about what's on my mind. So if you have bought guitars online, whether that's Craigslist, whether that's Reaver, whether that's eBay, you have come across an ad or two where a seller is advertising the guitar he's selling or she is selling as vintage. Gives me chuckle every time because for some reason, a lot of people have acquired this thought where old equals vintage. Or is it? So I think in industry of guitar, I think, what is it, 25 years? If it's been 25 years since it was uh, brand new, then I guess it qualifies as vintage. But in order for you to advertise the guitar you're selling as a vintage guitar, in my opinion, I think the guitar has to be worthwhile, guitar has to be reasonable, and guitar has to be, you know, wanted. Just because it's old should not ever equal that it's vintage. Um, if it was a piece of shit 25 years ago, 30 years ago, just because it has lived through 25, 30 years since, it doesn't magically become vintage, something people would want. So if it was a piece of shit 30 years ago, don't try to sell that as a vintage guitar today. That is just asinine and get the f out of here speaking of a v guitar right here uh -huh, uh -huh. speaking of a v so recently there has been a seismic shift in the signature v endorser who went from a brand that he's been associated with i don't know how many years and he's now endorsing this new uh maker that he's moved on to. So Kerry King, who has been with BC Rich for, I don't know how many years. To be fair, I'm not even that big of a fan of Kerry King. Um, of course, he's one half of, you know, Slayer. Come on now. But I, me, I always had my allegiance with Jeff Henneman more than Kerry King. Uh, but, you know, you all know Kerry King's BC Rich guitars, whether that's Warlock, whether that's the V. So Kerry's been no, you know, Kerry's been associated with BC Rich for as long as I can remember. But apparently with, apparently now he's with Dean, coincidentally, the Dean. Um, and I think the announcement came maybe about a month ago and I saw this guitar. You tell me, I, I, of course, you can only do so much with a V guitar. You could only, you know, chisel away or make modification in design. Only so much to keep the integrity of the V shape 
and make it still look good. You know, I love Phil Demo's guitar, which I own, what, two or three of them. I also love uh, Trivium's Corey's um, iteration. Uh, that's with the Jackson, but he, briefly when he was with the Dean, he also had a little cutout on the V design that set his guitar aside from other V-shaped guitars, which I still own, by the way. Now this... These, now this uh, Kerry King signature, I don't know, could you design an uglier guitar? I don't know, it just uh, seems like a big failure in terms of the look anyways. The guitar plays great, I don't know. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Slayer has retired. I think they did the final concert, matter of fact, a couple weeks ago. So I don't know if Kerry is planning a different band, a solo effort, I don't know. Obviously with an endorsement that means he's going to get a cut of, you know, sale of his signature guitars. Which means that he's going to have to find ways to drive sale and that means, you know, new music and new whatever. So I, I don't know where this whole thing sits. From Dean's perspective, does it make sense for them to sign an artist who is no longer, you know, associated with what he's primarily known for? I, I, from the artist's perspective as well as the 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 guitar maker's perspective, I don't know where the, that whole thing sits. So, that's just something. And another new topic that I wanted, I actually briefly touched on it in my last This and That show, um, which I will link right here. So this guitar fakery stuff has been uh, going on on YouTube for a bit now. Actually, the week that I'm shooting this video, I think it calmed down a bit, but it escalated pretty epic a couple weeks ago. Uh, famous YouTuber in our sector here at guitars and whatnot on YouTube made a video basically saying yeah this guy's doing miming this guy's doing speed up and I don't know why guitar playing evolved into acrobatic stuff where you know million if you can hit million notes per second you just become a better guitar player I don't know I'd rather watch Gilmore hitting one note and dragging that on which is a lot more soulful and more you know, and if you want to talk about a YouTuber, I love watching Red Shawl. Um, that guy, you know, is a great guitar player and I learned so much from just watching his channel. I'll link his channel right here if you are not familiar with him. But, you know, stuff like that really inspires me and whatnot. And, you know, the, and then the guy who was accused of... Um, speeding up or you know whatever he also made a rebuttal video and he seemed like a real classy um the man presented himself uh, with class i don't know where i sit you, you know i mean if you are speeding up you know great um you know you must have reasonable amount of skill to make the final result look good where other people are either jealous or accusing you of you know wh whatever the case may be um because you can't polish turd and make it look like gold. Turd is a still turd, no matter what happens. The case in point, myself, doesn't matter if I speed up my playing. That's not going to look any better. I mean, I, I suck. So, um, you know, more power to you. But, you know, in this day of uh, social media where you need to get number of likes and subscribers and the clicks and... For the sake of getting all that, you know, vindication of other people watching your, you know, creation and you're validated by number of likes and clicks and, you know, views and whatever. It's, I don't think that's how this was meant to be. So that kind of saddens me, saddens me a bit, especially when it's something that's near and dear like the guitars which I you know come and talk to you guys about all this time so uh, you know well what are your thoughts let me know next topic I want to talk about so I live about 20 miles north of an uh, area called Burbank in California so Burbank is where back in the early back in the late 70s and early 80s where Randy Rhodes lived and has a uh, had a guitar lesson going on and 
I believe Randy's mother and Randy's memorabilia stuff still, uh, the, all that stuff is out in Burbank. And a couple weeks ago, apparently there was a uh, burglary attempt where a lot of Randy's memorabilia stuff got stolen. That includes like the photos and framed art stuff and like apparently a bunch of Randy's studio gear, like uh, guitars and what have you. So like the photos and whatever, I uh, read something that they were found in a trash dumpster somewhere. And uh, luckily, so so that's that's good stuff. But I guess all the guitars and stuff are still missing as of today. If they have been found that I don't know about it, please comment below and let me know. So like Ozzy put out $25,000 in rewards for any clue to where the guitars could be, if they could be found. You know, and I saw that about Ozzy and I, I two thoughts crossed my mind. So Randy is my all time favorite guitar player. Um, so again, it hits near and dear to my heart. And you know, Ozzy, when he unceremoniously got kicked out by, uh, from Black Sabbath, he resurrected his very successful solo career, which began with Randy, who wrote a lot of those songs with him for, what is it? Um, it's not Diary of Madman. It's not Park, of, Park at the Moon. What's the album that he did with Rand, uh, Randy with uh, the, the very first album? Blizzard of Oz. Jesus Christ. So, you know, Crazy Train, uh, Mr. Crowley and, uh, you know, Revelation and D and all these stuff. I mean, he found his success and literally he was able to come back and make that monumental comeback effort after Black Sabbath uh, fiasco, thanks to Randy. So I was appreciative that Ozzy put out some reward money out there for Randy's stuff being recovered. Also, at the same time, I went, wait, you're Ozzy. You, you're sitting on tons of money. I mean, 25 grand is all you could put out. I mean, Randy's gear that's stolen is literally, I don't know if anybody could put value in that. Uh, apparently, like Gilmore's guitar collection went, uh, were, were optioned at two point some odd million. Maybe I don't know the number. And, you know, just a generic 1959 Les Paul Sunburst goes to, goes out for what, half, half a mil now? 750,000 or, you know, whatever it may be. So maybe the appeal isn't there. Maybe Randy's personal gear sh isn't held that high in people's minds. But I don't know. There are, I mean, his body of work obviously is very shortened. It's not as much as, you know, other artists who later on in their career just put out junk. But, you know, the entire body of work that we are familiar with from Randy, even though it may not be as big as some of the other artists, I mean, they should be, I don't know how many guitar players were inspired by Randy's and, you know, his Concord, his V, his white Les Paul Custom, all those should be really mean, I don't know if they're the ones that are stolen, by the way. Um, so whatever it, the stolen stuff is, I think they probably command more in value. Maybe Ozzy could have uh, done a little bit more while he was at it to bring more attention to the matter and make it worthwhile for someone to turn the stuff over back again or or get arrested at that point. <laughs> And uh, or at, at least the clues as to how the stolen gear could be recovered. So that, those are my thoughts. And, um, it, you know, I just wanted to come on here and just kind of share my thoughts uh, with you guys. Like I said earlier, I got uh, recently some uh, cool stuff, which I haven't even mentioned, by the way. There is an Epic gear, which I re recently acquired, which I haven't even talked about or even shown you a picture of. Um, actually, if you follow my Instagram, you might have seen a photo of it. So um, with that said, I will come back soon. I'm planning to cut another video for Christmas, which I will, sh which will come up here either tomorrow or uh, the, the, the day after. So I will come see you again in a few days. So that's about it for this episode. I hope all of you have a merry 
Christmas or happy holidays, depending on what your religious belief are. I don't want to offend anyone. Uh, whatever your belief is, I hope uh, this uh, time of the year, at the end of the year, treats you well. You find happiness. I have a lot to be thankful for, uh, as some of you may know, um, because I had a near-death experience about seven weeks ago. I am happy to be alive. I got another battery low warning, so I'm going to try to shut up and end this episode. Uh, so, hey, whatever your religious belief, be thankful for what you have, that you are healthy, that you are alive. Even if you're not healthy, I'm sure you could find something that you could be thankful for. And this is that time of the year where you need to find joy and happiness in wherever stage of life that you're in. So that's my parting words. Um, from yours truly triple g you've been awesome i've been triple g until next time everybody take care and be good humans